Hey, hello everybody. I'm back once again. God still speaks through visions and dreams. Yes, he does. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to jump right into this. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is, again, um, I think, well, I'm pretty sure that there are some of you out there that are still having problems with the succubus and incubus. You know, um, that was a time I didn't even know what succubus and incubus was. I just happened to stumble up on the word in the dictionary because I used to just go through the dictionaries a lot, and, and I saw that word. I said, "Oh, what's that, what what that word is mean?" And when I read it, found the definition, and I realized, you know, I've been having that I have been having that problem. But anyway, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, ways to deal with the succubus and incubus. Some people, some people, Lord help me to convey this message the way you would like, and I pray, Father, that it be of help to somebody, and help somebody get free from um, the burden of this, these spirits, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, I ask, amen. Um, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> uh, now... I had no idea what succubus and incubus was, say, probably about 25 years ago I learned about it. Um, but what happened was, the Lord showed me how to deal with succubus and incubus. Okay, as I said, some of you all, I've heard of some people getting prayed for and getting delivered instantly, and I've heard of some people, they just quote a scripture uh, in the name of Jesus and they never bother them again. But some people, you are bothered all the time. And you don't know quite how to d deal with it. And uh, so I want to try to help you. Because see, let's, you know, let's be real about it. There are some trials. There are some things that we're going to deal with in our life. It, it's going to, we're going to deal with it the rest of our lives. Okay. Everything is not going to leave us. Some things we're going to have to master in our life, okay, it's not, it's not that, uh, it's not always convenient where, you know, it'll just leave, there are some people in our lives, there are some things in our lives we just have to deal with until it's gone, okay, and for those of you who that are like that with this, um, I'm going to share with you what Christ shared with me, about having how to how to deal with the succubus. Um, I remember I remember him. I remember the Lord taking me. It looked like I was beneath the earth somewhere, and uh, there was these men that was approaching me. He was with me. The Lord was with me. And but they were wanting to fight me for some reason. I had no idea what what what. What uh, what was going on? They wanted to fight me, and so the Lord was saying, "Fight them back, fight them." And so I started fighting them, and we was fighting and carrying on, and uh, and I noticed my strength was enormous. My strength was like a hundred times greater than theirs. I would take their arm, and I, one of them I just took his arm and just snapped it like a dry dry twig. I was so much stronger than him. But anyway, I had no idea what he was, what he was uh, training me for, and um, we were fighting and carrying on. But anyway, after I, they they wasn't gonna let me get past them. That's what they were doing. I, it's been a long time since I had that dream. They weren't. They were. They was not gonna let me get past them, and they were just really, really uh, determined, adamant about it. But. So I managed to get past them, and once I got past them, though, I had to, I had to cross a river of fire, and I went through that river of fire, and I reminded of the scripture that says, "You'll pass through the fire, and it will not burn you." So, but you know what? I found out. I didn't have no idea what that, that dream meant. I'm really now, I'm starting to interpret my dreams more. I'm starting to interpret my dreams. If you're a dreamer, 
uh, I would encourage you to start interpreting your dreams because I'm finding out, man, God, if you are dreaming, he's speaking every night almost to you. And he's telling you what's coming almost every night. See, sometimes there's some things in the Bible we just don't, it's not written in such a way where it's general. It's generally, it's, it's generally written, okay, a pattern, like a, like a pattern, you know, for, for generally for everybody. But sometimes those specific words, like you moving to another state or uh, you marrying a particular person or uh, something happening in your marriage or something with your children or some uh, event, unexpected event, God will speak those things to you in dreams a lot of times, okay? And so if you learn to interpret your dreams, so your dreams, people... When you your dreams are you are actually going into the future when you in, when you're dreaming, you're in the spiritual realm. Your dreams are not just mere dreams, okay. Um, now I know some of y'all have already heard me say this stuff before, but it's really important that you get this because you're going to need this in the last days. The Bible says, "I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall see visions." So you're gonna. A lot of you are gonna be seeing visions and having dreams. You're gonna need to know how to interpret these dreams and understand them. Okay. Uh, you can't. You you won't be able. Don't get. When when God starts speaking to you in dreams, first of all, go to the Word. Make sure that that dream doesn't contradict the Word of God. Now I'm talking about something I get. I'm going to talk about something I hadn't got on there to talk about. But make sure that dream doesn't contradict the Word of God, okay? First of all, fourth of all, foremost, don't, it don't contradict the Word in any way, okay? And secondly, uh, you've got to understand that that uh, God speaks to us in dreams. You understand your dream, interpret your you can you can interpret your dream. Look at other interpretations, okay? Look at other interpretations. Don't accept all interpretations. Don't accept all of them, okay? But look at some of them. Do not accept Islam or the uh, the Muslims' interpretation of dreams. They have the wrong god, okay? Buddha and all of them don't accept any interpretation of that. But uh, ask God first, Lord, what does this dream mean? You know, there have had some dreams where uh, it took me years to interpret those dreams. Years. Uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Okay, but I got the interpretation when it was time. All right, when it was time. Uh, and he will give you the interpretation. Now, if you having dreams, you can't spend a lot of time with people. If God is speaking to you constantly in dreams, but at the same time, you can't be off by yourself all the time either, okay? You have to know how to be normal at the same time, okay? But if you spend a lot of time with people, they're just going to interrupt you. They're going to interrupt your flow. They're going to... They're going to um, uh, cause you to just lose your focus okay and you got to do some meditating and and and, and all that and on your dreams what you've seen in your dreams because i'm telling you god is going to be speaking to some of y'all a lot through dreams okay uh and and you'll know what is coming okay you'll know what is coming you'll know how to prepare for them okay prefer prepare for the whatever is coming now, uh, when God showed me, when God showed me these men that were fighting against me uh, beneath the earth, wherever it was, in a dark place, like it would look like it was beneath the earth, well, I re later on re realized what it was, you know. And then, a sometime short, short time later, not too long after that, I was with him again, and we were looked like we were beneath the earth again, somewhere in some dark place. And these these females started approaching me, and he said, he said, take your hand. He he let me know to just take my hand like a sword. Use it like a sword. Use it like a sword and just go this way and that way. And and I did it. And when I did it, it they 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 were severed. 
just like as if a sword had just severed their bodies. And um, some more came out, and they was walking toward him, and he said, point your fingers at them and release fire on the and, and fire actually came from my fingers and, and set them ablaze. And so I didn't know what was I didn't know what he was why he was teaching me this stuff. Now I did, I did find out. Listen, this is another thing I found out in in having these dreams. Every time I saw I would see Christ, I would see him. Every time I, I would see him, I would have a very hard trial. Shortly after every time I finally got it I finally got it the last time I had I saw him um, I was in the hospital back in March April and sure enough it wasn't a month had a month went by I had a very hard trial very hard but okay that see it's a lot of things you can learn through your dreams okay and and you know to expect some things and prepare for some things, okay? I'm telling you, learn to interpret your dreams. Because as you can see on YouTube, more and more people are coming up with dreams that God has given them. Some of them are not symbolic. Some of the dreams are, or he's actually telling you what's going to happen. But some of them are symbolic and you need to understand how to interpret them. Okay, but this these women was approaching me, and he was telling me how to just destroy them with like a sword, my hand using like a sword, and fire from my fingers. And so, but anyway, this last uh, female succubus, I didn't know it was a succubus at the time. I didn't know what it was. She was approaching me, but she was really, really ugly. Really, really ugly and scary looking. And so, um, and so... I tried to do the sword thing, you know, but it didn't work on her. And so I tried to, you know, burn her with the fire and all that. That didn't work either. So, but she was getting closer. She was coming toward me and she's getting closer and closer. And, cl and she was really, really hideous. Okay. I mean, just absolutely hideous. Demons are most... They are just the most despicable and ugliest, hideous things. But um, anyway, I was starting to get a little concerned. Because, I mean, I'm doing the sword thing. I'm doing the fire thing with my fingers. And nothing is happening. And this thing is, she's keep, she keeps getting closer and closer and closer. So I look around for the Lord. I'm thinking, where? He, he gone. He left. I'm, I'm, I'm here by myself. Okay, I'm getting a little concerned, okay, because this, what he showed me, all this stuff, it's not working, <laughs> and he's gone. So, I stopped all the magic, all the stuff, power stuff, and I went to go look for him, okay? And I looked here, I looked there a few times, and, there, and, then, and I looked in this, 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 um, See, the Lord has a little sense of humor, y'all. Y'all probably didn't know that, but he does. But I looked in this little, looked like a little chest or something. And he was in there. And when I looked in there, he had his hand over his face like this. And then when he opened, when I opened the chest, he went like that. You know, playing, you know. Just playing around, you know. But I was serious. I, you know, I was serious. I mean, there's the monsters out here. And they, they trying to get me, you know. So, but anyway, um... He showed me how to take care of that one. But what I got out of the dream, now I didn't know he was he was uh, preparing me for the succubus and incubus attacks at night. I didn't know that. But when I when I went to look for him and he was in this thing hiding and playing, he was letting me know that there are going to be some times when you're going to run into a succubus and incubus, you're going to need to seek me. Okay, I'm going to need to seek him and for help. Sometimes you're not going to be able to always deal with those spirits on your own. You're going to have to make fast. I'm talking. I'm going to talk about how to deal with the succubus. You're going to have to fast. You're going to have to pray sometimes. You're going to have to wait on the Lord. Sometimes I have to wait on the Lord, and He He would tell me what to do. He would tell me, uh, "Sit up tonight. Don't sleep tonight." Or He would tell me, after I wait a while and see what He say. He would say, "Don't sleep tonight." Or He would say fast tonight, don't eat tonight, or he will say, sleep on the couch tonight, or he will say, uh, something, 
Okay, so he would tell me how to deal with them sometimes. So there were there was times I would fast, I would pray, I would I would seek him, I would just speak words sometimes. I would take the scripture and speak the scripture. The number of things he would lead me to do after I would come to him and seek him and wait on him to be delivered from a particular succubus or an incubus. Okay, so... Uh, and I didn't know that's what he was training me for at the time, but I later found out. Okay. Now, uh, so he let me get my first experience in. Now, by the way, I, I need to, I need to talk about where are the succubus and incubus in the Bible. I don't see anything in the Bible about succubus and in, or incubus. I do see uh, where there's a word called satyr, satyr, s a t y s a t y r. In the book of Isaiah, I think it's the 13th chapter. And the screech owl, it's 13th chapter, I believe it is now, I believe 13th chapter. The screech owl, uh, uh, when Edom is destroyed, Edom is destroyed. They become a desert. Now those two particular animals that are mentioned are spiritual beings and they are night stalkers. Okay, but I I don't know how that relates to succubus and incubus. But it alludes to succubus and incubus. Um, the only other thing I can come up with is <clears throat> uh, the strange woman. The Bible and the book of Proverbs talk about the strange woman. Okay, the strange woman. That that could that could be a good a good scripture for. I mean, because strange woman can be. Uh, uh, Humans right here among us, prostitutes, anybody, any woman that's not your wife, just a just a random woman. That's a strange woman, whether she be in your sleep or not. Okay, uh, and I found out the succubus, y'all. I'm gonna tell you some. A lot, some of the succubus are not always just spiritual beings, demons, fallen angels. They're women, right here in this world. They operate as succubus at night. Now I know it might be kind of hard for some of y'all to believe. But I found this out, man, because over the period of 20 years of dealing with succubus and incubus, I found out that there are women in this world, they operate as succubus at night in the spiritual realm. And I know I know one or two, three or four. I won't call their name, of course. But uh, and, and there are women and men. There are women in this world. In the physical world, they have the spirit of succubus. There are men, they have the spirit of succubus in this world. And when you run across a woman that has the spirit of succubus or a man that has a, a spirit of incubus, they don't want to get married. They don't want to get married. Or if they do, they they, they, they sap your life. They drain your, your energy, your thinking power, your everything. That succubus spirit. Okay, they drain you of your money, they, they, they control you, they manipulate you, okay? They got you in the palm of their hands. That's the succubus spirit. Uh, and you know you need to get away from them, but you can't, okay? They don't want to get married, uh, you know, but you know you need to get away from them, but you can't. Okay, um... But getting back to my the main thing of my story, um, God gave me my first on hands-on training with my first succubus, and uh, I was shocked. I didn't know I had there was so many. I didn't. I, had, I didn't even know it was one. Okay, I didn't even know it was one. But one day I laid down on my bed, went to sleep, and I, uh, okay, one day I laid down on my bed, and I, you know, I've, I've, always, I've always had sleep paralysis uh, ever since I was 10 years old, ever since I was 10 years old. And so this was very similar to sleep paralysis. Very similar to sleep paralysis. But uh, what happened was I was laying there on the bed 
and all of a sudden, it was like I just went, the best I can ex describe it, I just went, Ooh. and I was in another reality. But I was still on my bed, and I looked over, and this blonde-haired, blonde-haired white woman walked out of my bathroom. And I spoke to her as if I knew her, as if she wasn't a stranger at all. And what I said to her, I said, I know you're not my wife, and you're getting out of my house. She stood there and she said, mm-mm. I said, don't tell me, uh-uh. She said, why? I said, because you're getting out, that's why. And after I said that, I went, mm -hmm. I was back here in the physical. And when I woke up in, the, in this physical realm, I said, what was that? <laughs> I was shocked, okay? The white woman just walked out of my bathroom, okay? Okay, as time went on, I dealt with her for an extensive, extended period of time, I don't know, maybe three, four, five, six months, I had to deal with it because, for one thing, she had gotten an upper hand on me. She was used, she used intimidation. Now, their succubus don't always control you the same. This one used intimidation. And I was afraid of her, and I didn't know I was afraid of her. I didn't know it. But after God, after the Lord taught me how to deal with her, she was afraid of me. But I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, over the course of time, but anyway, after I, after that little experience, I got up out of my bed. I walked in the front of my living room, and I was thinking, what was that? What was that? And the Lord began to talk to me. He said, now, you talk to her. Tell her to get out of your house. I had to do it in the physical realm. And so I did. I said, you got to get out of my house. And, that was, and I could feel those cold chills, man. It felt so spooky. I said, you got to get out of my house. You're getting out. And she started talking back. Now, <laughs> this is another thing I found out. What you think to be just mere thoughts, they're not. And when she was talking back to me, it just felt like my own thoughts, my own imagination hearing. I'm imagining her talking back. But it wasn't. I've learned over the years it's not. What you think to be just usually your imagination, it's not. You, it is so easy to communicate with spiritual beings. Really easy. But anyway, I, 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 I was telling her she got to get out of my house, and she, she said, no. She said, no, you better leave me alone. She started talking back like that. I said, no, you got to get out. No, you better leave me alone. And just, you know, so the Lord began to explain. He said, don't argue with them. Just command them. Don't argue. Don't never argue with the spirit. Don't never argue with the spirit. Because arguing with the spirit is like, um, is like uh, while you're arguing with them and contending with them, they're taking something from you. Don't argue with them. Command them in the name of Jesus. Command them. Get out. you getting out. No, I'm not getting out. You are getting out. Get out and just stand your ground. Don't move. But anyway, over the course of a few weeks, she would come by and she would try to play with me, you know, when I, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And she would try to intimidate me and make me afraid of her. But one time she did intimidate me really good. One time I was... I don't know how she managed to do it, but I was, she was sitting on the bed, I, and I was sitting on the floor by her feet, and she was looking down at me like, now what are you going to do? As if she had caught me or something, you know, and trapped me. And she was looking at me like, well, now what are you going to do? He was talking all that big talk now what do you and I was I was afraid I was really afraid <clears throat> and I'm down there 
sitting at her feet and she's sitting on my bed and I'm saying, all I'm doing is saying, Jesus, 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 you know. See, I didn't realize that is not how you use the name of Jesus. <laughs> you don't use the name of Jesus in fear and doubt, okay? But you just realize his name is your foundation. His name is your authority. His name is your strength. Okay? You don't use it in fear and doubt. So I'm down there on my, sitting on by her feet, at her feet, saying, Jesus, 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 afraid, you know. But anyway, I got past that. I got, once I came out of that vision, of that experience, I got up and I thought, man, I, should, I feel ashamed. I was afraid of her. I was afraid of her. But anyway, as time went on, she uh, she would drop in and intimidate me. And one time I was sitting on the couch and I actually felt her coming and put her arms around me on the couch. In the physical. Now, this wasn't a dream or an experience, a spiritual experience. This was this actually happened. But I was too afraid to move because by me moving, would would be I would be saying that this is real. So that would spook me out. So I just didn't move. I just pretended it didn't happen. Wasn't happening. But anyway, eventually, where I got to, this is where God He after He taught me how to deal with this. This was my first experience with succubus, and I'm gonna give you some more experiences. And uh, He told me never call them by name. Okay, she called. She said her name was Aspartine. Aspartine. She wanted me to call her by her name. But don't call them by their name, the name they give you. Because when you call them by their, the name that they give you, that denotes friendship, befriendment. She's not my friend. They're not your friends. Okay? They they, they, they want to destroy you. Succubus, if when you're playing with a succubus, that's like a boy playing with a butterfly. You know what's going to happen to that butterfly? The boy is too uh, inept to play with the butterfly. He's going to end up injuring that butterfly. Even though he likes the butterfly, he loves the butterfly, the butterfly is beautiful to him, but he can't play with that butterfly. That butterfly is going to end up damaged because he's too inept to, to deal gent gently with that butterfly. That's the same with the succubus. They're dragons. They're, they're dra they have the nature of dragons. Satan and the evil fallen angels and demons have the nature of dragons. And your soul is too delicate to be handled by a succubus and incubus. They're going to injure you. They're going to hurt you. Okay, but eventually I ended up, uh, God ended up showing me how to deal with her. One night she came in my room and she called my name, Clint. Clint. And I knew who it was. I said, get out. I just said, get out. But she wouldn't get out. So I got up. I was in the spiritual realm then. I went back in the spiritual realm. I got up out of my bed. I grabbed her, and I just beat the crap out of her. But you know what? She still didn't want to go. I was beating her telling her to get out. She still was, she said, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. So I took my idea with the Lord. told me I took that finger, and I, I released fire from my finger. That's all in the spiritual realm, okay? I released fire from my finger and set her ablaze. And she still didn't want to leave. So I gave her three fingers or four fingers, and I set her ablaze. And she started screaming and crying. But you know what I did? I told her, I said, wait right here. I said, wait right here. I'll be back. And I left her there screaming. And uh, I walked through my door, my doorway, and I was in another dimension or another reality or something. And I went into, when I left through my doorway, I went into another world realm another it would look like another world okay I don't know what it was but uh, it was in I walked from my door into like a mall okay now I'm talking about the spiritual realm y'all okay okay but I came when I came back to my room though she was gone she was gone a few days later she came back to my house trying to get me to interact with her again and I was like no I'm not interacting with you no more I said and I said, get out right now. And she was trying to explain. No, let me explain. Let me explain. No. See, you don't understand. I said, no, you better get out. I'm going to set you on fire. And so uh, finally she was convinced that I was going to set her on fire. She didn't leave. And she took off running. She took off running. And so I followed her. I was all in the spiritual realm again, y'all. This is not in the physical. 
I followed her to a uh, building, looked like just a house, and she ran up to this house, jumped on this porch, and there was this other Caucasian, uh, uh, let's see, Scandin Scandinavian looking woman, you know, the two blonde haired women. She was on the porch waiting for her. She extended her hand out to her, and oh, by the way, the name the name Aspartine. She told me to call her about Aspartine. That name means lost serpent, lost serpent. So don't call them by their name because when you call them by their name, it's like befriending it. So don't do that. Call them the devil, like you're supposed to. Okay. Now, when um, when um. When she ran up on this porch and this other succubus extended her hands out to reach to receive her, she pulled her up on the porch and I'm standing there looking and I looked at this this other succubus that received uh, this one that called herself aspartame and I distinctly remember her face. Now listen, this is what, this is, this one trip you out right here. But days later I was, I was just out taking care of business. I had to go to the grocery store, just do some shopping. I went in the grocery store, and that woman I saw in that experience that received that aspartame lady, she was working the cash register. Yes, she was. And I'm standing up looking at her. I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. That's her. I distinctly remember that face. So I don't understand. I think they're. I think they are residing in two. Well, the Lord 